Good to see your smiling faces. It is Shabbat. Praise the Lord. Give me a big Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And um, maybe one day the whole world will say it. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. I, I think they will. If you listen uh, in this Torah portion today, uh, there's some interesting verses. I mean, it's the, the things that God says, I'll just read them to you. And uh, God doesn't change, so whatever he wrote in this portion, Torah portion, thousands of years ago, he still is still true today. Uh, the title of today's Parsha is Va'ak, Va'akanan. I don't know what that means. It's Hebrew. The only, about the only Hebrew I know is the one to bless the food. You know, I know that one. I learned that one real quick. Um, and I was trying to think of, I usually put something underneath the title, and I was trying to think of something to put under there. The Lord says, did you, put under there, did you lose your temper this past week? And uh, I had several opportunities to, to lose my temper this wet, past week, but I did. I praised the Lord, and I told him, thank you, Lord, because I know in this offense, in this situation, in this event, you're trying to show me something. So that's how I look at it. But that I've learned that the hard way to, to accept. In all things, give thanks. And it's hard to do. Even when it's not going your way, it's just hard to do. So I was, as I was getting ready for the service and I was talking to somebody, somebody says, I saw that, what you put up there on the board. Do, did you lose your temper this week? And this person said, yes, I did. I said, did you voice it? And I'll talk about that here in a minute. If you don't voice it, it's you you get a get out of jail free card in a way. You follow me? You can get upset, lose your temper, but if you don't voice it, because uh, what is what does the Bible say about the mouth? It's like a sword. It it kills. So if you don't voice it. Then it's just between you and God. And then you and God work out that anger issue. You work it out. And then the Lord shows you, well, maybe he's trying to give us more patience. Um, I had to learn a lot of patience in my work for 46 years. A lot of patience. Has anybody learned patience in life? <laughs> Praise the Lord for that, right? Praise the Lord. So, uh, go back to the slide there. So, I told this person, I said, well, you, uh, you didn't voice it, so you didn't, you didn't um, sin. In a way, I, didn't, I don't know if I said that, but you, but you didn't sin. Because if you had voiced it, that could have been sin. Because then it says, love your neighbor as yourself. That's a commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, if you voice your displeasure with someone... You're not loving them as yourself, and that is sin. See, so this person didn't voice it, but then they have to work it out between them and God. I, I remember one time, this was years ago, uh, someone did something to a member of my family, and uh, real close member, and uh, I said, that person can never come to Christmas anymore. This was before Torah, right? I, they can't come to Thanksgiving. They should never have done that to you. You know, they can't come. And this person said, no, Larry, you, they have to come. You've got to work this out between you and God. So every time this person's name would come to my remembrance, I'd say, Lord, help me forgive them. I had to do it every single time because I was not in a forgiving mood. You know, you ever been like that? Not in a forgiving mood? I was not in a forgiving mood. I was a little angry with this person. And I said that no one can treat you this way and still come to my house for Thanksgiving or for this or for that. Well, anyway, this person told me, Larry, you have to forgive. And that's a commandment to forgive. So every time this person's name would come up, uh, that bad feeling, I'd have to uh, take take authority over it it's a spirit it's a spirit and it wants to still kill and destroy you see so it's a spirit it's not the person it's a spirit operating there and 
So as long as you do things the way God says, then you have authority over the Spirit. If you do it the way he says. So every t- so I was trying. I was trying. I'm trying to do the tour. I love your neighbor as yourself. So every time this person's name would come up, I'd say, Lord, help me. Forgive this person. I don't feel very forgiving. It took six months. It doesn't. If it happened to you overnight, praise the Lord. It, it didn't happen to me overnight. Okay. I had to keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. And then one day, because I took it to the Lord, the Lord was healing my heart. But it took about six months. My heart was healed. One day his name came up. And I'm thinking, okay, he can. I was thinking, okay, he can come. I don't mind it. I'm healed. It's okay now. He can come. You know, do I still have issues with this person? I really don't have issues with him, this person. But I don't trust him. I don't trust him. Because I've never seen fruit on his tree that would tell me he's any different. Okay? Now, if I saw that, then I could trust him. But, but, that, but just because you don't trust somebody doesn't mean you push them out of your life. You don't, please don't do that. Don't push family out, out of your life. You know, love them and then let, let the Lord change them. Who can we change? Nobody. <laughs> we can't change Nobody. And uh, hopefully we're all learning that. Vyakanan, did you lose your temper this past week? So I want to get a show of hands. Who lost their temper this past week? Raise your hand. Okay. We've got a few hands there. Okay. So what we're going to be talking about in today's Torah portion, if depending on how much of it we get to, uh, I just kind of feel a shaking coming on. So I don't know what the Lord has in store. I want to the spirit to move in this building and uh, I, if he wants something else I'll, fl- I'll we'll go with that whatever the lord wants we'll go with it but if he wants the, the his scriptures read then I'll do that also hopefully we can do both okay so this torah portion today is about losing your temper getting angry upset with words okay uh and I say, if you're careful with your words, loving your neighbor as yourself and loving God, then you are the bride that Yeshua is coming back for. You're the bride because uh, you love your neighbor as yourself. So in this Torah portion, Moses says, I pleaded with God to let me go to the promise. I pleaded. I begged. I begged. I begged. And he, he says, but he won't let me go. And why would he not let him go? Moses lost his temper, got angry. It says, uh, I can't go because you people, your fathers, provoked me in the wilderness. And I hit the rock and said, must I get water out of this rock? Instead of giving all the credit to the Lord, try not to lose your temper. Just zip it and then just get into prayer. Pray in the Spirit, whatever you need to do. And the Lord will work. I promise you, the Lord will work it out for you. And he also might be testing you to see how long you're going to stay like you are. (laughs) How long are you going to stay upset? See, we are to count all things with joy. Go through Because he might be allowing it for a purpose. That's the thing we've got to remember. So... Another question, is it okay, it's in the Torah portion, is it okay to ask God over and over and over again for the same thing? The answer is yes. That's what Moses says, I pleaded, I begged God to let me cross over. I begged him, I pleaded with him over and over again, see. So it's okay. And um, in this this Torah portion today, the Ten Commandments are repeated. Okay, this is the third time the people heard the Ten Commandments. First time from God himself on the mountain. Loud. Fire. It was say, we can't hear God's voice no more. Uh, We're going to die. It was so loud. Okay. Uh, then Then they heard the Ten Commandments with the first set of written stone tablets. Now they're hearing it. The Ten Commandments the third time from the second 
set of written stone tablets. So why does God have to tell the people the Torah more than once? Why do we repeat the same parshas year after year? We're, I'm hard of hearing. I, I don't know about you. I need to hear it over and over again. It's just like it's the tenth year I've done this. I love the I love the word, and I love reading it again. And the, when it says forever, that sticks in my gut. When God says forever, if God Almighty says forever, what does that mean? It means forever. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you need to ask God, please, why do the Ten Commandments need to be, re be repeated? So you need to ask him that. What is the difference between adultery and fornication? That's in this Torah portion today. I had to look that up one time. So the difference between the word adultery and fornication, I didn't know what it was what the difference was. That's in the today's Torah portion. And now we talked about that before. And then we hear the Shema Vehafta again. And then we're going to learn about, is God three beings? Is he three different beings? B-E-I-N-G-S. Three different beings. Or is he one being? Echad. Called Echad. E-C-H-A-D. We're going to learn about that. And then... And Daniel, I forget, well, in the handout, I'll give you the actual verse. But in Daniel, Daniel asked God, when will everlasting righteousness be restored? Uh, where sin's kind of locked up and people are doing the Torah, everlasting righteousness. And then he gives him the, the vision of uh, 70 weeks, 62 weeks, 7 weeks, 1 week. And um, so uh, that's when everlasting righteousness will be restored. And I say based on tombstones and some other reasons, uh, we're about 20 years away from everlasting righteousness. So if we're only 20 years away uh, to go to the promised land, you've got to have seven years of, of plenty, seven years of famine. Actually, for Egypt, but Israel is caught up in that system. So that's 14 years. That at least leaves about six. So I'm saying we're about 20 years away. But we'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, we're in Sparta, Tennessee. We're on uh, Ben Loma TV, uh, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Today is the Sabbath, praise the Lord. And on the Sabbath, Yeshua healed people. Things happened on the Sabbath. So I come expecting today. I come expecting. I know a miracle is going to be done here today. If, even if it's something in our spirit where we understand one word that we didn't understand before. Or one scripture that we wasn't clear in our mind before. To me, to understand the scriptures is a miracle in itself. To understand the scriptures. And, uh, and Yeshua did miracles. We're, we, we come expecting. A lot transpired this week in our, on our TV, in the news. We always pray every night. Uh, I say, Lord, please uh, protect the righteous leaders. I use leader. I don't just use politician. I say, Lord, thank you for protecting your righteous leaders. And uh, I feel like that prayer again answered this week. Now, you got to be careful uh, what you watch on the Internet. We're not to put our trust in a man. We're not. The Bible says do not do that. Yes, I, th I think the Lord probably did save Donald Trump's life. But is it a test for God's people? Are they going to put their faith in a man? Or are they going to put their faith in God? I think it's a test. And, uh, yes, I think he, he can help this nation. And uh, especially if persecution comes to Christians and Jews, I think because of his upbringing, his family, that he will help us in that persecution. But at the same time, don't think that he's going to correct everything. He, I see him 
righteous side and an unrighteous side. And yes, he may have had a close encounter with the Heavenly Father. I think he might have had that. But I think he's going to have more. I think the Lord will use him and speak to him to help Christians and Jews. But he has to work out his salvation with fear and trembling. If he keeps having a potty mouth and talking bad about people, God's going to judge him for that. He needs to be a humble man. And I think I see, we saw that this week with his speech and everything. But it depends. It depends on him. We'll, we'll see from that. Okay. Now we're going to do the Shema. So stay standing. This is a delete. You don't have to have a delete to do this. You can just bow your head. It's okay. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Makuto Le'olam Ba'el Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And the Vehafta, love your neighbor as yourself. That's a commandment. And uh, if you're online watching on TV, uh, on the internet, we just pray this prayer for you. Lord Father God, we pray that you'll touch the people that are listening today and heal them in Yeshua's name. You are the great physician, Father. We thank you for that. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Everybody says, well, I pray in the Spirit all the time. Yes, we have the Spirit when we're born again. We're given the Spirit, God's Spirit, when we're born again. But that is different from praying in the Spirit. You may say, I pray in the Spirit. No, you're just praying. You're filled with the Spirit. You have the Spirit, but you're just praying. There's an extra measure of the Spirit called the baptism, and that is tongues. And I resisted it for a long time. Now I'm going to give you proof from the Bible because I hear it all the time. Oh, I pray in the Spirit all the time. No, you don't. I, I, I know these people. They say, I pray in the Spirit all the time. No, you don't. I've never heard it. There's, there are two types of praying in the Spirit. One is a language between you and the Lord. One is a language for the church, edification of the church. Th that's the only one you need an interpreter for. Do your language between you and the Father. That's a private language between you and the Father. But it is not English. Praying in the Spirit is not English. Okay? So, and I'll prove it to you one day from the Bible. You need to explore it just a little bit. You know, talk to somebody that's filled with the Spirit, with the baptism, and they can help you. The reason I decided to do it was because God says it's a free gift, and I want all he's got. So if he, it's a free gift, and I ask for it. I know my Father will give it to me, but he may not give it to you when you're expecting it. So what happens to people is, They'll experiment with it, try it, praying in the Spirit, and nothing works. Nothing happens. They're waiting for something supernatural to happen. Nothing happens. So they give up. Does a little baby who's going to run one day, run marathons one day, start to walk and fall down and decide to quit? No. They keep getting up and keep trying. We held a little baby this week. That little baby... Just born, was it yesterday? Day, two days? Two days? Little baby, this big is so cute. You want, she said, you want to hold her, him? I said, no, I, I don't want to break him. <laughs> My word. Lord gave me several rainbow words during that music. I'll share them in a minute. Actually, he reminded me of a rainbow word he gave me last night while I was sleeping. I guess 3 o'clock, it may have been 5 o'clock this morning that he gave it to me. I'll share that with you in a minute.
but it has to do, you notice a lot of those songs had ho- the word holy, holy in it, holy, holy in it. And um, so did anybody get a rhema word uh, since sunset last night during the worship today? Uh, something you, you know is from the Lord. What he gave me um, in one of those songs there, it says an angel touched his lips. What were we talking about earlier about our lips and loving your neighbor as yourself? That just jumped off the page at me. It says the angel touched my lips to remove my sin. You see, it fits so good. To remove my sin. So where is sin? It's easy for it to be right here. And then it says, I fire took it away. So I'm waiting for the final harvest of souls to come into the kingdom. What is it going to take to remove the sin of the final harvest? It's going to take a fire. Don't you see it? It's going to take a fire. And then they'll want the Lord. They will want the Lord at that point. So last night, uh, it was 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and I was laying there, and I was just thinking about the Lord. Does anybody at night when you're laying down sleeping think about the Lord like all night long? (laughs) Let me get a show of hands. Everybody, everybody, praise the Lord. That's a blessing. So I'm laying there, and I'm thinking, Lord, today's Shabbat, and I just need your presence. I, I'm seeking your presence. Some people call it seeking his face, you know, but his presence. And I'm just laying there, and I don't feel his presence. So I said, uh, it came to me, this word, and I say it's a rainbow word. I just said, Holy. And the second I said holy, I saw his presence. It just flooded me with a light. It was with a light. I saw a light. I had my eyes closed, but I saw a light. I knew that was the Lord. So I just said it over and over and over again. Holy, holy, holy. Isn't that what the angels are saying? Holy, holy, holy. And he wants us to be set apart like him. Holy. Theokonon, did you lose your temper this past week. Now we've come back around to the made full circle, back around to the start. So uh, if you did that, then maybe this tour portion is for you, okay? Uh, oh, it's the handout. Did everybody get a handout? Okay. It's a long one, um, but it's things the Lord's shown me about this tour portion. So on page one is Viakonon. I don't. It begins with the Lord reminding, standing before the Israelites, that He pleaded, He begged the Lord to extend grace to Him, so that He could enter the Promised Land. Just think about Him. He's been leading these crazy people for forty years, <laughs> and He's a very humble man. You know, very humble man. He only messed up one time when he was provoked and got mad and said something he shouldn't have. But he lost his temper. So if you lose your temper, will you not get to see the promised land? Will you not be the bride? That, that's the connection I get from the Torah portion, okay? So I have to put a bridle. It's called a bridle. You want a horse to stop. You yank back on that bridle. You know, you put a bridle on your lips, okay? And I'm still learning that. I've been learning that for a long time, but I'm still learning that. Don't lose your temper. So uh, Rashi, uh, I mentioned his name. He's, he does commentary on the Bible, the prophets, the Psalms, and the Old Testament, first five books. So he's called Rabbi of Israel. He lived around 1000 A.D., he was considered a very intelligent man. This man, I respect him a lot. Are there things I disagree with him about? Surely, sure, there sure are. One, he didn't believe in Jesus. That's a, that's a no-no right there. He didn't believe in Jesus. But he understood the scriptures. The he, see, there's a lot in the Hebrew scriptures. It's just like uh, 
the way the scriptures are written, the actual uh, consonants and the way they're written, and when the words are written one before another, one after another, and even line after line. Uh, for a good example of that, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Why were Nadab and Abihu, um, Aaron's oldest two sons, killed? In the very, ne- it doesn't say why they were killed, but the ne- very next verse says, "Don't get intoxicated and appear before me or, or come near me." That has to be a connection. Why is that verse there? Right after Nadab and Abihu die. See, there's so much in the way the Bible's written. And uh, so Rashi uh, understands the way the Hebrew is written. So he has a lot of good commentary on the, the Bible. So anyway, Rashi says that Moses asked Yahweh and Moses would not let Yahweh go. So here Moses is praying to God, praying over and over and over again. Begging God, and he would not let God go. Have you ever been in a prayer like that? Well, you just won't let him go. You just keep praying to him, praying to him, praying to him, until he actually got a yes or a no, and uh, he got a no. But he was praying that God would extend grace to him, and the reason he thought God might change his mind is because many times God said, I'm going to kill all these people <laughs> They've disrespected me for the last time. I'll kill them all and start all over, Moses. I'll, I'll raise up a whole new bunch. But Moses pleaded with God, please forgive them. And he would pray and pray and pray. And finally, the Lord would forgive the people. And that's why you have a second set of commandments. See? A second set. He let them live. And their, their, their children got to cross over. And but again, he's telling them, I want you to obey the second set of commandments. So. Uh, so Rashi says that Moses believed that it depended on him sometimes whether or not prayers for other people would be answered. So you, you all are righteous in God's sight. You're righteous. So your prayers carry a lot of weight. We see our prayers. We got a book. Hopefully you got a book where you say say a prayer and you write it down for somebody sick or somebody in a problem. And then later you can come back and check it off. It got answered. You know, you just keep praying, keep praying. We pray every day. So, so, so what I'm saying is sometimes your prayers for your neighbor, your friend, depends on you. Their faith may, may not be as strong as yours. You know, God... If you're saved, if you just believe you're saved, you'll be blessed. That's better than being a pagan. But if you've never, if you're never sanctified in the Word by reading the Word daily, uh, maybe your faith is lacking. See, maybe you don't have enough faith. God, I think you should says, "Let it be done according to your faith." Somewhere it says that. Let it be done according to. Maybe they don't have the faith to be healed. See, or to move on with God. But you do. So sometimes, like Moses, sometimes our prayers can make things happen for a family and friends. So I'm just saying, don't give up on your family and friends. Keep praying for them. Deuteronomy 4.1, it says, Listen, that's the word Shema, O Israel, if you want to go to the promised land, you must do the Torah. Here, pretty much in black and white, it's saying if you want to go to the promised land, you've got to do the most important thing God has ever done. Spoke the Ten Commandments. He hasn't done it since then, has he? Spoken from a mountaintop where the mountaintop was burned with fire, where the people uh, said, oh, we can't listen anymore. He, they said he, he was so loud that it was heard in 70 languages all around the world. I don't know about that, but that's pretty loud. Okay, and they, they, I'd say they had their head in the dirt probably. And he says, and and then finally they say, no, we don't want to hear from God no more. You talk to God and tell us what he says. Okay. And then, um, so I'm saying it's the same for us today. If we want to enter this promised land, the promised land, the Sabbath thousand years is the promised land, and then the new heavens, new earth. So that's our promised land. Uh, So we want to enter it. It's saying here in Deuteronomy 4, you must do the Torah. 
That's all Ten Commandments, just the way they're, they're written, and with the Hebraic meaning, meaning of the Ten Commandments. Not just any old meaning of the Ten Commandments, the Hebraic meaning of the Ten Commandments. Verse 2, do not add to Torah or subtract. Because God's word is pure. It's refining, refined in the fire. Deuteronomy 4, 5 to 12. I have taught you people the statutes and ordinances. What's that? What statutes and ordinances? That's the Torah. Teaching and instruction. That Yahweh told me. So Moses is saying, listen, I'm not telling you what I think you should do. I'm telling you what God told me to tell you. That's what he's telling them. It's the same laws or the Ten Commandments spoken by the mouth of God. Verse 13 to 14. The Ten Commandments or Torah is God's covenant. That is God's covenant. This, he says this. He says, this is how he wants you to live your life. Follow these rules. And basically, Judeo-Christian principles have made the United States the greatest nation there has, it has ever been. That it, it has ever been. And uh, b because we honored that covenant for many years. That is the covenant. And, but when you break covenant and don't do what he says, he curses you. Okay? And the curse is not done away until Revelation 20 or 22. I forget. Um, then it says the Torah is written on two stone tablets. And this is the second time. Remember the first set of stone tablets. Because they did a golden calf, Moses threw them to the ground and they broke. And, uh, and it was because they broke the covenant with God. He just parts the Red Sea, takes them out of Egypt, gives them their freedom, and they're, and they're so... Anyway, they made a God in their own image. They made that, they, that calf, they called that calf God. Okay? They made a God in their own image. And that's what so many people do today. They say, this is God. This is God. That's why you have 44,000 different denominations. You know, I like what Bobby does. He says, I read this book here. That's who God is. It's his book. It's his Bible. That's who God is. I like that. Um, it says the first five commandments is your, is your relationship between you and God. The second five, and this is debatable. But the second five are between you and your neighbor. Follow me? And I'm going to tell you why honor your father and mother, which is number five, is included in the first five. Okay, I'm going to talk about that. It, the first five laws to include honor father and mother are on one tablet, and they relate to our relationship with Yahweh. The second five laws are on the second tablet, relationship with people. Why is commandment number five to honor father and mother included on the first tablet? This comes from a Talmud book. Now, the things written in the Talmud is commentary by Jews that aren't true. But I like what this sentence says. The special relationship between a parent and a child reflects the special relationship between man and God. It's your child. We are his child. See, the Talmud teaches there are three partners in the forming of a person. A person, The Holy One, blessed is he who provides his soul or spirit and his father and his mother. When a person honors his father and mother, the Holy One, blessed is he, says, I ascribe credit to them as if I dwelt between them and they honor me as well. Uh, so that's kind of why they do that. And, that, I'm, and I, that's probably debatable. But I, I see the special relationship that Lana has with children and grandchildren and this new great-grandchild we just had this week. Special relationship. And um, sometimes the children, grandchildren will listen to the grandparents more than their own children will. <laughs> you know, they do. I, I can't explain that, but that's, that's true. Okay, page three. Deuteronomy 4, 27. See, Moses, Yahweh knows, and Moses knows, that the people are going to disobey even after receiving this second set of Ten Commandments. Because it says in verse 4, 27, I will scatter you if you abandon the covenant, the Torah. Uh, 
29 to 30, verse 29 to 30. In the last days, in the last days today, and I think the word is actual, the Greek word is acheron, which means the very last of the last. When you turn from sin and idolatry, a golden calf, and return to Yahweh and his Torah, Yahweh shall remember his covenant, the Ten Commandments, with you. It's called restoration. And I'm saying partial restoration began in 1948, but the final restoration began in 2018. And I'm going to prove it from Scripture here in just a few minutes. Um, and it's all about Ezekiel laying on his side for, for 40 days or years and for Judah for 390 days or years. Um, and then being punished seven times for your sin. Because Israel, Judah, sinned against God. They're punished seven times. Israel, the northern ten tribes, also sinned against God. So they're punished seven times. Verse 35, Deuteronomy 4, verse 35. You have been shown things so that you will know that there is only one God and no other God is like Yahweh. Verse 40, you are to obey Yahweh's Torah so that you will have a long life. And it says blessed and have a long life. You can have a long life, but sometimes you might not be blessed because you might have this going on or this going on. But um, if you, I say if you're doing the Torah, uh, you'll have a long life and it'll be blessed and it'll help you and me in our situations. Deuteronomy 5, Yahweh's made a covenant with us, I could say Israel, at Mount Sinai and also with us who are alive today. So Yahweh made the covenant with the fathers who died in the wilderness. Now the sons and daughters are on the Jordan getting ready to cross over. He says, I'll make this covenant with you standing here today. The second group, the children of the fathers who died in the wilderness. And he says, and it's for every successive generation. It's forever. The the second set of Ten Commandments is forever. It says, and all that are alive today. And that in the Hebrew in that means for every successive generation. So we're in covenant to do the Ten Commandments if we want to live a long life and it and it'd be a good life. And I say it includes daily study. You know, if uh if you're you're in a courtroom and sitting in a chair and the judge says, how do I know you're a Christian? Can, do you have any people to come in here and, and uh, collaborate your testimony that you are a Christian? And then you have witnesses come in and say, yes, I, I saw this person speaking about God. Every time I was around, they are speaking about God, what God's doing in the earth. And I know they read the Bible every day, and I know they attend church. There's evidence that you're a Christian, Okay. But if you're sitting there in that chair and you say, yes, I'm a Christian, and the judge says, well, how do I know that you're a Christian? And you, and the, God's not on your lips talking about him all the time. No one's ever heard you talk about God hardly except maybe Easter and Christmas. What's that say about you? You, you may be a Christian in thought only. You... you your relationship with the Lord might be lacking, okay? Uh, so anyway, the Ten Commandments are repeated to this generation. Now, I'm going to go through them again because we need to hear them again. I just did this about a month ago uh, when we did the Ten Commandments. Number one, I am Yahweh your Elohim who brought you out of slavery. There is only one God. So, there's much debate about this. Some seem to think there's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So there's much debate about this. So my thoughts is that Yeshua was born, had a human body, died, and was resurrected. Now he has a resurrected human spirit body. It's a little, slightly different from God the Father. God the Father, he's pure spirit. The Son is a resurrected human. But he's born again, resurrected. See, he was born 
by a woman, but now he's born again. That's how you get eternal life. That's what we're talking about, mankind. That's how you get eternal life. You're born again. And um, so I say he has a resurrected human body like Yeshua. So now he's a spirit, and his spirit and God's spirit are one. Ecod. They're one, okay? Yeshua and Yahweh are one, or a cod, in thought and deed. Yahweh can hold the universe in the palm of his hand. Yahweh is our creator. After Yeshua received his spirit body, he's no longer bound by linear time. Yeshua can now be, in, be at creation. When could it have been Yeshua who spoke, let there be light? And created the world. Could it have been him? Once he received his spirit body, he's not bound by time. It's not 31 AD anymore. He can go back to the beginning because there are verses that say, in the beginning was the word, and that's Yeshua. So Yeshua and the Father are one, or a cod. Uh, ver- uh, commandment number two, thou shalt have no other gods in my face. And that's a God you, you create. That's like the golden calf. Don't have another God that you created in my face. You do it like I said do it. You know, he doesn't change. We'll go to page five. And I'm saying Torah will never be abolished. It's God's spoken word to the world. It's the constitution of the 1,000 years. It's also the constitution of the new heavens, new earth. Commandment number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So, when we say in Yeshua's name, has anybody in here said that? In Jesus' name? In Yeshua's name? We are swearing and making an oath to do what Yeshua did. If we say in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name, we're swearing to do what he did. When did he keep the Sabbath? Did he eat ham? Okay, number four. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy because Yahweh has commanded you to keep it. Shabbat is sacred. It's holy. It's special. And I say it's essential for the next six days coming up to the next Shabbat. So if you want your batteries recharged, So that you have a good week, you need to attend church on the Sabbath, okay? Yes. You you just got to do it. And he's promised to be here, right? Look around. He's here. He's here. The Lord is here. Praise the Lord. So I say, do you give Yahweh 100% between sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday? Because that's what the Bible says the, the Sabbath is. And you can read some more details there about my comments about the seventh day of the week and when the Sabbath is. And uh, the most important thing that I've learned from reading my Bible is Yeshua kept Sabbath on the seventh day of the week. That's when the Jews kept it. And he did not rebuke the religious leaders for keeping the Sabbath. On Saturday. He did not rebuke any of them for that. He rebuked them for a lot of other things, but not for that. What does that say to me? He approved of keeping the Sabbath on Saturday. And they knew when the Sabbath was because six days a week uh, they had manna, but on the Sabbath they didn't. So they knew when the Sabbath was every single week because there was no manna. They had to get double on Friday. So, so for 40 years, they learned when the Sabbath was. That's what God taught them. And as he brought them out of Egypt and the golden calf and all their evil ways and idolatry, he taught them when the Sabbath was. That's him. how important the Sabbath is to God. I say Sabbath is a, Saturday Sabbath is a fact. And I say you are cursed if you change it to something else. Commandment number five, honor thy father and thy mother. 
uh, with this command, the commentary is that you'll have a long life in the earth and also scripture. This includes attending to your parents' physical and spiritual needs and treating them with reverence and respect, even if they abused you to a point. Even, you know, if they're faithful, if they like, love the Lord, you know they're going to treat you right. They're going to make mistakes and mess up. We all have. But you forgive them for it. They're just like you are. But and if they abused you and treated you mean or something, uh, uh, you don't have to. You still show that respect when you're around them. You love your neighbor as yourself. You don't speak bad about them, but you may have boundaries that you don't let them hurt you, harm you, abuse you. Okay, if they did it in the past, you may have boundaries. But it's because of who they are and commandment number five, okay? Uh, number six, thou shalt not murder. So you should have even said if you get angry with your brother. It's okay to get angry. But he says, if, it's, if, you, if you stay angry, that's a sin. That becomes murder, okay? Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, so what's adultery? Lustful thoughts, and you can be married or single. You can be either one, married or single, and have a lustful thought. But you're not to lust after the opposite sex. You might be attracted at times. But you take that thought captive and you treat the person with respect. And uh, then I talk about the difference here at the bottom of page 6 between adultery and fornication. So uh, basically, i keep it simple. If you're married uh, and you're having lustful thoughts, pornography, or, 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 or going further than that with people, then that's adultery and you're married. But if you're single and you're doing it, that's called fornication. Okay. You're not to do it. Okay. Commandment number eight. There, thou shalt not steal. Why should you not steal? If you didn't work to obtain the money to have what you have, if you didn't work for it, it's not yours. And if you take it, it's called stealing. Verse number nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness that's lies against your neighbor so what constitute lies i believe a uh, uh, spirit filled loving loving god type person will be transparent with other people like nathaniel jesus said uh, you should have said uh, what you see is what you get with nathaniel he's a true israelite okay so, if Nathaniel said it, you could stand on that. You knew, if he said one thing, you knew he was solid on it. He wasn't going to go back on his word and change his mind the next week and be one thing one day and another thing one day. Another day, uh, transparency is required. So, when you talk about another believer behind his back, you're lying to him. When you listen to a fellow believer talk bad or place blame about someone, are you lying by not telling your friend what was said about them or just listening? The very best thing to say is, I do not want to hear this. Stop talking about them. And then if they keep it up, you have to leave. You have to. I'm just telling you, you have to leave. Say, hey, brother, I love you, but I'm not going to listen to that bad talk about them. I'm just not going to do it. I uh, love you, but I got to go. <laughs> Number 10, I've walked out of a few situations before. Thou shalt not covet. Basically, what this is saying, you should be happy with what you have, with what you have. Like, so you're to be content with what you have. You're not to say something like, well, you can afford that. That's not, that's not, that's not good. Well, you can afford that, you know. You're to be, be happy with what you have, and you're not to want something that somebody else has, okay? Uh, in all things, meaning at all times, we are to be thankful, happy, and content with what we have and what others have. Some people just work harder, okay? Do you remember 527? The people tell Moses to go listen to Yahweh and then tell it to them. Why? 
Why do the people want Moses to hear from God and they don't want to hear from God because he's too loud? Maybe they can, maybe they can ignore Moses and think they can get away with it, but they know they can't ignore God. You should walk in God's ways. Verse, it's Deuteronomy 5, 29, 30. You shall walk in God's ways, which he has commanded forever. That's the Torah, his teaching and instruction, forever. And I talk here about Ikad being a singular word. Um, you can read those. And it's also the Shema of the Hafta there on page 8, page 8. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 5, 7. We are to talk about Yahweh and his Torah all the time. This is how we show our love for Yahweh and Yeshua. And even Yeshua said, if you love me, you'll keep the Ten Commandments. That's my Father's Ten Commandments. Do people know that you love the Torah? I talked about that a minute ago, about being in the courtroom. Does anybody in here, you're saying prayers, saying prayers. Do you get impatient with God? You cannot get impatient with God. God's word is pure. Think about who he is. He created the heavens and the earth. His thoughts are pure. So if you're not getting an answer to your prayer when you want it, that's called being impatient. He has a reason for waiting. See, he has a reason. Do not, be, do not test God by being impatient with him. Okay? Deuteronomy 7. Verse 3 to 4. It is not a good thing to marry someone who does not follow Yeshua. That's basically what it says. And I added, it's not a good thing to marry people who pretend to do the Torah either. There are people who pretend to be a good Christian and pretend to be a Torah observant person, and they're not. And then in the Haftarah, it's the first one in Isaiah, Tor, uh, Parsha, that talks about restoration. And I won't get into all the details uh, about everlasting righteousness on page 10. That is restoration. That's when Yeshua is coming back to remove the sin in the earth. So if we go to page 11, it's a timeline for the restoration of Judah, the southern kingdom, and Israel, the northern kingdom. And uh, this is very specific. Judah was re restored as a... Nehemiah, Ezra, and those guys came back and rebuilt the temple. And this happened, and uh, it's 516 B.C. That's when the temple was rebuilt by Nehemiah, Ezra, and them. It's 516 B.C. So, if you punish seven times, uh, that comes to 516 B.C. And that's when the temple was restored. So, if God reestablished the southern kingdom in 516 B.C., according to his word, exactly according to his word, he's going to restore the northern kingdom, which is us, exactly like he did for the southern kingdom. That comes 2018. Now, all you got to do is run the, the numbers there. 2018. Now, did it happen in 2018? I haven't seen anything. But did it begin in 2018? That's what I'm saying. Did it begin in 2018? Now, I'm saying it did start for restoration. And I'm saying it happens over a 14-year period because you have seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, and uh, then... Um, they crossed the, into the promised land. But uh, that's when they would have, but um, they had to stay in Egypt a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll go to slides. Handout does better than I did, but it's interesting. A few uh, announcements here. Okay, uh, we've been, I've been praying about the book, and it, found, it was published this week. And... Uh, what it is, is the parts of the handout from uh, Genesis 1-1 to uh, uh, Pentecost. Like half of, half of the Torah portions. Okay. 
So I don't know how well it's going to do. It doesn't matter to me. It's never been about me. Um, in the book, uh, they're going to do some kind of interview or something. And they said, what's your most important Bible verse? I said, Acts twenty four fourteen. I, Paul, obey the Old Testament, the Psalms, the prophets. Have all my life. It was at the threat of death before a judge. He says, I've always obeyed the Torah. He never changed. And I just love it. He kept all the feast days. He kept the seventh day weekly Sabbath. And he kept the feast days.